Two of the most important influences in our world today are science and religion. And of course, we want to know how do these two human enterprises and uh, activities relate with each other. And I'm joined today by Dr. A.J. Roberts, a virologist, a molecular biologist, and a Christian to help unpack this. And I know you've given quite a bit of thought to this. In a previous episode, we talked about Ian Barber's four models for the relationship between science and the Christian faith. Uh, he had a, a model called uh, conflict, a model called independence, a model called dialogue, and a model called integration. And today we're going to focus on the independence model. So could you briefly describe for me, AJ, what is the independence model, and maybe who are some of the people that might ascribe to that particular model? Sure. Um, so independence, uh, as far as I understand it, was probably first articulated by a man named Stephen Jay Gould, uh, who was an evolutionary biologist. And he actually called it by an acronym, NOMA, which stands for Non-Overlapping Magisteria. And it basically means that science has its domain and realm of knowledge and authority, and religion has a separate domain of knowledge and authority. And so both have their realms, but they don't overlap, non-overlapping. Uh, and so uh, who else espouses this particular position? Most of the scientists that I've encountered in my history of research and, and teaching in academia, I would say adopt the position of independence. And if they take uh, the scriptures seriously, they probably think that they have very little to say about science. And if they take the supernatural seriously, uh, they probably think that it's completely separate from the scientific realm. Now, um, do you think this particular model is adequate? Uh, does it work well? Yeah, I don't think that the independence model is entirely bad because it allows people to take uh, theology seriously and science seriously and, and avoid conflict. Now, what happens though when science and theology kind of deal with the same issue, the same question? Yeah, that, that actually can become problematic because uh, in the independence model, uh, one might be tempted to emphasize one and minimize the other, and that can actually create a, a fracturing of, of a person's view of reality or, or one's worldview. It can also cause a, a false dichotomy that, that science is the only rational approach, uh, but that's not true. Uh, natural theology has always asserted that uh, God can be discovered or understood through human reason and observations. So those areas where they overlap, one really needs to kind of uh, employ one of the other models that we haven't talked about yet, probably dialogue or integration. You know, in, in my experience, um, when I see people espouse NOMA, even though they would argue that there are these separate domains, that religion is dealing with se different issues than science is dealing with, it almost feels to me that still science is somehow a little bit more superior than religion. Uh, do you get that sense as you assess this independence approach to science and religion. I certainly get that sense among scientists. I don't get the same sense among theologians. I would get the opposite sense among theologians. But um, among scientists, certainly, uh, because I think independence sort of forces you into that false dichotomy or that, that sense of tension that one has to take prior, priority or superiority over the other one. And for scientists, it, it kind of makes sense that they would choose that science would take priority. 